narcissists let's talk about them once and for all guys <laughs> and um, let me help you save you from one let me help save you from one <laughs> before they destroy you guys so please stay with me for the next 15 minutes and i'll help you identify other signs or signs that you can look uh, in your partner to know if you're dating a narcissistic person so guys thank you so much for coming back to my channel as always i say if what you're looking for in life is change growth and excellence then i am here i'm assisting in the journey and i'm doing this just for you so who is a narcissist you know i have people come to me saying i think i'm dealing with a narcissistic guy i think i'm in a narcissistic relationship i mean uh, this guy is so toxic he does outbursts he calls me names he claims to love me you know i cry every day <laughs> yet i love him but i don't love the way he treats but i don't like the way she treats me i don't like the way he treats me you are most probably in a narcissistic relationship and you're about to cry some more. <laughs> you're about to cry some premium tears. You know, but I want to help you so that you don't have to cry every day and you free yourself of that, yeah? So who is a narcissist, first of all, and how do you tell um, that that you are one? You know, it's let's also look at maybe you are the narcissist. <laughs> so so let's see um, what are some of the signs that you should look in you or even in your partner to know. Number one, the a, a, a narcissist is a person who lacks empathy. They have no empathy. They are very entitled. They are very self-centered. They are very arrogant. You know, they are, they have that excessive need of admiration and are very temperamental people you know very angry people <laughs> so um you know arrogant think you know that kind of arrogant thinking and behavior they are that they are excessively vain or full of themselves that's who they are you know but when they come to you when you're dating you know when you're getting to know each other and all that when you're meeting you know they are very charming they are very charming. They are speaking high things, nice things about themselves, grandiose things about themselves. So you fall for that. So they'll be saying, if it's like it's a man, you know, I have a vision of building this. I have a vision of building that in these countries. <laughs> you know, but inside they have nothing. They have zero. When you know them, uh, you know, uh, after some time you realize it was all nothing. It was all hot air. They have nothing. They have zero. It was... You know, so they, they are like that. They are very charming when they're coming to you and they look so nice. They are speaking in tongues, you know, spitting fire. Yeah, they are, they are, some will even pretend to be born again and they are not. <laughs> they're just hiding in church and speaking a lot of tongues, you know, but uh, they are just narcissists and they are just full of them, themselves and they're just people. If you love yourself, if you love your life, <laughs> you don't need to be around. So <clears throat> number one, how do you tell that these are narcissists? One, they frequently demean you, um, intimidate you, bully you, and belittle you. So everything you say, they demean you. They intimidate you, you know, so they will be threatening you. And and and, and you can always tell when somebody is, 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 um, is treating you like this, demeaning you, is intimidating you, is bullying you, belittling you. You know, every time you speak to them, uh, you, you have a sad feeling, yeah? Every time after speaking to them, you, you end up feeling hurt. You know, you're, you're wondering, why am I feeling a bit sad? But it's because you spoke to them. Because somehow they said something that's one of these. Either demeaned you or intimidated you or bullied you or belittled you or your idea. So it's all about their idea, you know. So, you know, when someone is treating you like this, they, they, they are just trying to show you, like, don't speak, don't recommend to me anything, don't suggest anything, don't, it's about me and my way and the way I see it, it's my way or the highway. And and sometimes, most of the time, they'll do this because they know your capability and they know you're well able, they know me, possibly you're better than them, they know you're doing better than them, so they want to make you feel small, make you feel so small so that it's all about them. You know, <laughs> that's, that, that's number one. If you have such a person, chances are they are a narcissist. Please run for your life. Two, your relationship is no longer caring, kind, or safe. So, or, or sin, sorry. It's, it's not sin. So what they'll do is that they will hurt you. They'll either call you a, a name or insult you or do something just hurting that you, they know will hurt you and then they blame you for, for it they'll spin it back to you they blame you for it you know and you're the one who'll be apologizing always for their mistake you're always the one apologizing you're always the one going to make peace 
you know why why should you you know agree to do such a thing so and and uh, this is the thing if somebody hurts you and they cannot come and genuinely apologize and you keep on taking them back you know they will they will never they keep on hurting you they don't respect you actually you the, you the, you lose, lose they lose your respect they lose <laughs> you lose their respect and uh, they keep on hurting you and they keep on hurting you and they keep on hurting you so that they put you down especially if you're doing well than them you know you are more exposed than them or you are doing better than them or you even have more money than them you know they'll keep on you know doing these kind of things they hurt you and then you are the one to apologize for it so if the relationship is not caring, it is no longer kind, it is no longer sane, and you need to get out of it. Number three, they use your, your vulnerabilities against you. So, you know, in a relationship, what we do is that we are going to be sharing what I'm going through, what um, my weaknesses, you know, my strengths, what I have, what I don't have, what I wish I had, what I, you know, you will be sharing those kind of things. So you are sharing your vulnerabilities with them, they might also also share you uh, uh theirs with you but when you know they are, you're angry and possibly you're arguing you know or you're not seeing things as way they will start using your vulnerabilities against you yeah if maybe you told them that in your family there used to be this your grandmother was like this they'll be telling you maybe you're just like your grandmother no wonder your grandmother did this yeah yeah or maybe it is about you, you had a certain condition, they start using that against you, or a certain weakness. So please don't share with them. When you realize somebody is like that, stop sharing with them your weaknesses or your vulnerabilities because they're going to hit that. They're going to hit that and it's going to hurt. When you're arguing or when the time comes, they're just waiting for the right time. And they're going to hit you where it hurts. So they're, they're just, just to break you. The purpose is just to hurt you, just to break you. It's just that evil you know so uh that's point number three point number four they bring out the worst in you they will bring out the worst in you have you ever been with a person and you feel like you're no longer yourself you feel like you have to compromise so much you have to compromise your values you know you have to keep tolerating you have to keep making do with the minimal you know you you have with a bare minimal you know bare minimal respect you know they don't respect you anymore they call you names they call you and and you know you are you're wondering you know it affects your self image your self worth you even start looking at yourself and wondering am i beautiful if you're a lady <laughs> am i beautiful yeah they'll even just in fact they will even uh go uh, liking other women's photos if it's a man eh? they'll go liking other women's photos maybe on instagram or on twitter or wherever on social media just so that you see and so that uh, women who are also beautiful so that you see, so that you possibly feel jealous, so that you just, they just hurt you. They are like that. Even a lady, they'll go doing that, you know, or speaking about how a man, another man had some biceps looking so good, or he has money, or he is more accomplished, or he's doing so well in life. I like those type of men. <laughs> you know, just to, so just to belittle you. They tell you that uh, to belittle you and show you that, you know, you are nothing. There are even better ones, you know, and, and all that. They're just so evil. That's who they are. They bring out the worst in you. They bring out the worst in you and they make you feel like you are nothing. Like, you know, your self-esteem goes down. They wreck you big time. Self-esteem, self-worth can, can be gone like that. So that's point number four. If you find yourself, you you know, you always have to compromise your values to keep a relationship. It's time to hit the door. Yeah. It's time to hit the road, brother or sister. Point number five. That's point number five, right? Yes. Point number five. You find yourself having to prove that you're a good person. You're always having to prove that you're a good person. Why? Because they always accuse you and blame you for all the things that they do. They always blame you for all the things that they are. So you have to tell you, for me, you know me, me, I can't do that. You always have to prove, you always have to prove. They know, and they know what they are doing. They're not stupid, they know what they are doing. You know, so they'll insult you and say, you can't be calling me names. Yet they are the ones who did that. 
They are blaming you for what they did. And any anything they do, and you see those are people who don't take, um, they can't take correction. You can't correct them. You can't criticize them. Even if it's constructively, they cannot take it. They cannot have it. They are perfect in their own eyes. <laughs> they lean on, leaning on their own understanding, they are perfect. So they cannot be advised you cannot have a conversation with them to solve issues. They are always sweeping things under the carpet. You will never finish an issue. They have no time for it. They can't deal with it. And then you start, uh, you go on, you know, with other things, you know, having swept things under the carpet. And they're going to come back to bite. They're going to come back. They're going to show up again. Because if you haven't handled an issue, you shouted at me, you raised your voice at me, and 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 you didn't sort that. You know, so one person feels hurt. You haven't sorted that because you don't want to raise it because that you want to keep the peace. Because this is a person who go basic. You know, <laughs> they raise your voice again on you, and you don't want to do that. You don't want to handle it. You don't want to deal with it. Let me tell you, it's it's gonna explode on your face very soon, very very soon. So it's 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 um either you speak with this person, um have them apologize or. Uh, have them, you know, uh, at least uh, establish some boundaries of respect or you just, you know, you just leave them. So you find yourself having to prove that you're a good person, yet you know you're a good person. And then um, these are people, by the way, if they help you, <laughs> just on the point that I was saying, um, they use your vulnerabilities against you. Even when they help you, I've just remember that point, um, even when they help you, they help you so that they remind you that you remember I helped you. You remember the way you're desperate. You know, I helped you with this and that. You, they are doing it for a purpose. They are helping you for a purpose. And they're going to speak about it. Even if you have helped them more, they, you, they're going to speak about it. They're going to be, they'll be telling you, oh, you know, at some point you are desperate. You needed this. You are stranded. I needed this. Who was helping you? They, anytime there's an argument, you say, did I, didn't I help you? You know, they, they'll use even the help they give to you against you. It's like they are doing it just to use it against you. You know, it's so bad. It's even so evil. Okay, number six. You are always at the receiving end <laughs> of the argument. <laughs> you are always at the receiving end and you're always the one to make amends and to clean up the mess. Yeah? So if the uh, his hand and outburst and he hung up on you or she hung up on you, you are the one to go looking for them, make the peace. <laughs> yeah, you, you you know, make the peace, apologize. You know, making the peace is basically apologizing for everything. I'm sorry for everything. What? What? <laughs> no. <laughs> you can do better than that. Just, just leave that chick or leave that, um, leave that lady or leave that guy. So you're the one to always mop the mess, you know. You you're, you're always the one to now go be uh you know <laughs> under the carpet and mess uh, mop the mess there. Uh, no, it's it's just so uh, life sucking and draining, and you just can't do it for long. So if you find yourself, you're always the one doing this, always the one reaching out, always the one talking to them, always the one they're angry out of no reason. They want you to figure out why they're angry and they won't talk to you and they're giving you silent treatment. They're giving you, they're ghosting you, you know, and you're the one to always seek out what happened, what did I do, what did I, ah, you, you need to just go and meet them. They're not so good. This is the thing with narcissists. They're not so good with details. And uh, or accountability, they're not good with details. Accountability. So even when you agree, or oh, can we speak in the or or they tell you can we speak in the next ten minutes? It will not be ten minutes. It will be hours later, because they don't care much about details of or what you feel about it. You know, or even keeping a promise. They'll give you a ton of promises which you'll never keep, because they don't. You know, they really don't think about the details. I said, uh, we're gonna speak in. 30 minutes that will be hours later they just never keep time so um um you know that so they're not good with details they're not good with accountability and they're also not good with um so, you know sen the, the the sensibility 
they are not sensible they are not sensitive you know so even when like you plan you do something together like you said you're gonna be praying together at six in the morning or something like that um they just will never be on time and they can't be accountable when you try and follow up they it will explode on you you know they'll blame you for it they blame you for their lateness you know so um you are always at the receiving end if you are always finding yourself you're always crying that's why somebody will say i cry every day because you're always at the receiving end it's like somebody <laughs> you're dating a warlord <laughs> you're dating a warlord yeah somebody is always ready for the war they're always ready for the fight they are always looking for it anything small will explode anything small will explode you when you if you feel every time you have to talk to somebody it's like you're walking on eggshells please run you're dealing with a narcissist. You're dealing with a very toxic person, and and you know it's um you you're gonna have some more tears. <laughs> so, um, you know just just if if that's you, then just leave. Point number seven, um, they are envious of your success. They are always envious of your success. They even wonder how you have done it. They even wonder how you have done what you have done. And especially I'm, sp I'm speaking if you're having uh, one, one person is more accomplished or they, you know, they, are, they have more accomplishments than the other person or they are doing better than the other person. So you find they are envious of your success. They can't help you with, with, if it's your business, maybe you're in business. They can't help you with thinking, or how can I take this business um, forward? What do I do with the vision? They can't help you with that, and they have nothing to offer. They can't help you. You know, whether you're married <laughs> or you're just in a relationship uh, uh, you and you're working on it, they can't help you with anything to do with your business. So you're speaking about everything else, but all the things that matter to you, they won't contribute. They don't care. You know, so they can't help you think about things that really matter or things that, you know, pertain your success. They can't, you know, because first of all, they're even surprised how you have managed. <laughs> they even wonder how you get to certain levels. Yeah. They're even shocked. Yeah. Because they they want to bring you to your to their level. And, and somehow it's like even them being with you, it's, um, it gives them some kind of a status, you know, <laughs> you are like an upgrade to them. <laughs> you are the upgrade. Yeah. Yet they are envious of their success, of, of your success, and they have nothing to offer you. They have nothing to offer. So if you are with such a person, they have nothing to offer. Actually, there are people who, if you remove the conversation of sex from the, um, from the, you know, discussion. They have nothing else to offer, zero, empty, nothing. Huh? If the only thing somebody can talk to you about is sex or just useless, nonsensical things, huh? yeah, they have nothing else. If you remove that conversation, they have not, and you look critically, what else has this guy helped me with? Uh, help me with? What has this lady helped me with? You know, we can't reason together. We can't think together and do things, you know, that uh, really pertain our success or accomplishing or even growth. You need to rethink that relationship. Number eight, <laughs> this is second last, emotional needs are not attended to no matter how genuine they are. So you're feeling sad or you're feeling this and that or you're hurt by what they told you. And when you speak to them about it, they don't care. They don't care if you're uh, sad. They criticize you for being, as a matter of fact, they criticize you for being weak and emotional and uh, <laughs> and and uh sensitive or or insensitive you know so they they will criticize you for feeling the way you're feeling you know you see if i'm feeling hungry eh? that's a feeling you can't criticize me for feeling hungry that or or tell me oh i shouldn't feel like that i already feel hungry and you can't the only thing you can do is give me food you understand so if i'm feeling like i'm hurt because of what you told me you know, you can't then just come and tell me, oh, um, you shouldn't be feeling like that. You know, you know, I think you're just being too sensitive and you're just being a child and you're just being uh, this, you're just being weak. You know, it's very dis disrespectful. And that is manipulation. That's how they manipulate. And then they ghost you and they don't care. You know, they, they uh, blame you for feeling uh, for, for feeling bad about your dis about their disrespect for you. Can you imagine how toxic is that? Oh, run, run, <laughs> run, Jesus. Okay. 
And then the last one here, anger bursts. Anger bursts and emotional tantrums. Anger bursts, emotional tantrums, they are calling you names, verbal abuse, mental abuse, huh? uh, emotional abuse. You know it graduates from mental abuse, then it gets to emotional abuse. Then when they realize they're not hurting you enough or you're not getting it, you're not getting the hurt, you're not getting it, you're still doing well, you're still looking beautiful, you're still looking nice, you're still succeeding, it turns to verbal abuse. They call you names, they raise their voice on you, and then they even want to justify, do you know why I raised my voice on you? Can you imagine <laughs> that? Lady, if you have a man who raises his voice on you, please run because uh, that man will then, it, that verbal abuse always turns to or, or results uh, or results to a physical abuse and then of course there is a physical abuse when it's there it, it turns because you see all these things are try to 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 belittle you make you feel uh, um, small and make you like worship them like it's uh, everything they say is the right thing make you feel nothing like you are a slave you know it's it's actually meant to be like enslave you. All of these things, the anger burst, the emotional, you know, they, they have no other way to express themselves than do an anger burst. Yeah? They burst out, they blurt out, they, you know, and then they'll come and say they apologize, you know, um, after a very long conversation, they come back to themselves. Then uh, the following day, when you do something they don't like or you don't agree with them, they go back again. The demon is back. <laughs> the demon is always there. Hey, you need to run. And then they start punishments. You know, they don't talk to you for a while. They don't care. You know, uh, they pass, you know, holding another lady or they, they you know, they just to make you feel hurt, just to make you feel guilty or not guilty, just make you to, to, to make you feel jealous. If you have that, that kind of a person, let me tell you, whether it's a lady or it's a man, you are dealing with a narcissist and you need to run for your life. You need to run. And by the way, when you go, uh, they keep coming back to see if you're still stupid. They'll keep coming back. They keep coming back. You know, they'll go and try to get other, you know, um, men or ladies and then they can't find somebody like you. So they keep coming back to see if you're still stupid. They keep coming back. You know, I still love you. You know, But they don't and they don't care. They're only back to see why, because they are jealous. Why are you still doing well even after everything I've done to you? After all the names I've called you, after everything I've done to you, you're still doing well. So they are coming to now do the <laughs> killer blow. <laughs> Please don't accept them back. Even if you still feel strongly that you love them, learn to live without them and learn to free yourself of that uh, yoke because it's it's a yoke and it, and they are coming to finish you <laughs> okay so guys uh please free yourself from a narcissist and if you're the narcissist please can you change because you're destroying your life and destroying other people's life and uh, i always say every bad thing you do to others every pain you instill to others in relationships uh just because it feels good to do that you're sowing in joy you're sowing in joy. You're sowing pain in someone else's life. Pain, disappointment, you know, and 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 hurt. You're sowing in joy because, um, you know, you feel like you're won. You feel strong. You feel like, you know, a man, or you feel like a woman. The power of a woman, eh? By 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 seeing another person suffer because of what you're doing for them. Let me tell you, those are seeds that you are sowing in your own life, and you will reap them in due course. You will reap them, and and you will, you know, you you so enjoy, eh? you so enjoy. You reap in tears. I can assure you of that. Please change, please change. Go and apologize to somebody if you have to apologize. Apologize even to God, <laughs> you know, and um, um, you know, just 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 um you know treat people right it's okay if a relationship doesn't work a relationship doesn't have to work it can crumble it can fall but at least don't disrespect people insulting them doing all of those things to just hurt people it will come back to you there is no way it will not come back to you <laughs> god will bless the work of your hands the work you have done of of hurting other people um he will also bless so <laughs> you will also reap the fruit of it 
thank you so much guys please subscribe and let me know um your experiences dating a narcissist or if you're the narcissist let me know your experience please let us talk about it on the comment section please remember to hit the notification bell and remember to subscribe thank you